live, on air, and online. This is WSAB News 3 at 11. All right, tonight, final numbers rolling in for key state races, including one which could have a huge impact on which political party controls the U.S. Senate. Good evening, everyone. I'm Russ Riesiger. And I'm Tina Tai Shaw. Thank you for joining us for this hour-long edition of WSAV News 3 on your side at 11. After months of rival TV ads, candidate debates, and a host of campaign visits, You've made your final picks at the polls today, and Republicans do appear to be well on their way to wrestling control of the Senate away from Democrats. Georgia is one of the battleground states in that fight, and here we have Republican David Perdue and Democrat Michelle Nunn up against Libertarian candidate Amanda Swafford. And a look at the numbers now. This race has been called by CNN. Purdue with 56% of the vote. News 3's Andrew Davis has been in Atlanta all day with the Purdue camp. He joins us now with a closer look at what is a very happy atmosphere there tonight. Andrew. That's right, guys. The cheers just went up. They just saw it on the screen officially. David Perdue is the new U.S. Senator out of Georgia. Bedlam here just a few moments ago as everyone cheering, throwing their signs up in the air, getting ready to put their candidate in office. We haven't heard from Perdue so far, but his message was clear. He's a businessman. He's someone who can do something for the economy of Georgia and bring more jobs back. Michelle Nunn fought that, saying he outsources jobs. He does a lot of things. In the end, though, all the experts had picked this to be potentially a runoff or as close as possible, but the Republican base came out strong. A 2% nationwide was much bigger than that. The addition for the Republicans was much bigger than that right here in Georgia. 57% approximately so far with ballots still to be counted. The folks here believe that he was the man for the job. Zaxby Chambliss believed he was the man for the job. Jack Kingston said he would even support him even though he lost. You can hear the cheers behind me. The balance of power now shifted over to the Republicans, or appears that way. That's where those cheers are coming from. Everyone's been here. They said, oh, the Republican Party didn't support them. Everybody said, no, there's no question that the Republicans didn't want David Perdue necessarily. Now they have him, and they've come out strong. Zaxby Chambliss, Jack Kingston, former Governor Sonny Perdue, Johnny Isaacson, all here to give their blessing to the new U.S. Senator out of Georgia. Now all we're waiting for is to hear from David Perdue himself. As soon as he comes out, we will have more from David Perdue, along with reaction from various people who are believers in what David Perdue can do for Georgia. As the cheers go away, we'll leave it back to you guys. All right, a lot to be happy about there. Well, David Perdue spent much of his time earlier today calling Georgia residents from his headquarters. His opponent, Michelle Nunn, did some last-minute campaigning in downtown Decatur before heading to her headquarters in Atlanta. <laughs> a two-party system and she again has thanked supporters thanked her family and indicated that uh, she thinks she's done her duty and that again she congratulates David Perdue and wishes him good luck in the U.S. Senate. Michelle Nunn still talking to the crowd. I'm Joanne Merrigan reporting live from Atlanta. All right, Joanne, thank you for your report tonight. Of course, on the larger political scale, tonight's U.S. Senate race in Georgia is just a small piece of the puzzle as the Republican Party picks up gains in 10 key states in hopes of gaining Senate control. News 3's Dave Cartoonin takes a closer look at the Senate battle. Well, Tina, we're watching Iowa, we're watching North Carolina, and at midnight tonight, they'll start counting in Alaska. Two out of those three races go to the Republicans, and Mitch McConnell is your next Senate majority leader. 
A lot of predictions that this would take place. It is playing out all over the country right now. Probably the most interesting thing that's happened in Georgia right now is that people did not turn out to vote for the libertarian candidates as they have in the past. Libertarian candidates that have driven races to run off elections uh, into overtime have pulled three and four percent tonight. Amanda Swafford and Andrew Hunt are pulling in the ones and twos, which is why you've seen Governor uh, Deal win re-election tonight, why you've seen David Perdue be called. We won't have runoffs in this race. You won't have any more political ads on your airwaves for the next two months in the case of the U.S. Senate. But the other thing that's interesting tonight is that the margins have been higher for Purdue and Deal than they have in any of the polls or the polls that we've tracked. On top of that, we've also seen turnout down in pretty much every county around the state with a few exceptions. And those exceptions are only up marginally uh, in large part because of growth, but also in the counties that we have seen some increase in turnout, they have tended to be Republican states. The huge drive by Democrats to get more people to turn out to vote has not turned out. There were some tens of thousands of people who voted in Chatham County in 2012 that did not turn out this year, just as an example. That's the latest in the newsroom. Dave Cartoon and WSAV News 3. All right, Dave, we want to thank you for that analysis tonight. And uh, there are other key races that we're keeping a close eye on for you as well tonight. Georgia's governor's race, uh, co of course, Governor Nathan Deal, the incumbent um, running uh, against um, Jason Carter, the Democratic candidate, and of course, the Libertarian Andrew Hunt. And looking at the latest numbers, Governor Deal will not be giving up his seat in this election. There you see he has that commanding lead with 56% of the vote. All right, we're going to have much more election coverage in just a minute, but first a quick break after uh, it was a chilly start to the day. We warmed up nicely. What's ahead for tonight? Let's check in with Storm Team 3 Chief Meteorologist Chris Allred for a first look at the forecast. Well, Georgia's first congressional district up for grabs after a longtime Representative Jack Kingston vacated the seat to run for the Senate this year. Republican State Senator Buddy Carter handedly defeating Democrat Brian Reese tonight. News 3 Sheila Parker spoke with the newly elected congressman just a short time ago, and she is joining us now with more. Sheila? Well, Tina, the announcement was a long time coming this evening, even though Carter never trailed as those results trickled in. Close to 200 people gathered in a ballroom at the Hyatt Regency in downtown Savannah awaiting the candidate's appearance. As he watched results in a room upstairs, it wasn't until the Associated Press officially called the race around 930 that he came down and spoke to that crowd of supporters. One of the first things he did was give credit to his predecessor for his years of hard work in the job. Jack Kingston has done an outstanding job for the past 22 years. And, you know, for someone who is a product of this area and a product of the 1st District, this is really humbling for me. I mean, you know, I remember back to Elliot Hagan, the Bogin, to Lindsey Thomas and Jack Kingston. And now to think that I'm holding that seat, uh, that's a tremendous responsibility and a tremendous honor for me. And Carter says he was waiting for the numbers to come in from Chatham County, the most populous county in the district, before coming down to make that acceptance speech. A glitch had held up those numbers for a while. Sheila Parker, WSAV News 3. All right, and a result we told you about on News 3 at 10 on MyLC. District 12 Democrat John Barrow has lost his bid for a sixth term in the U.S. House of Representatives. Construction company owner Rick Allen winning that race with 98% of the precincts reporting. Allen has 53% of the vote. This election was first and foremost about how to, tr how to try and change the culture of gridlock and paralysis in Washington. For 10 years, the voters of the 12th district have given me a chance to do that, and I'm most grateful for that. Of course, that was John Barrow talking about uh, this last race for him at this moment. He has lost to uh, Rick Allen. And, of course, we will continue to follow that story as well. Another big race that we have been watching for you today is actually a rematch. Next, we're going to look at if there was any difference in South Carolina's gubernatorial race this time around. And now you're taking a live look from our Savannah cam. We will have much more on Decision 2014 in just a few minutes on this special hour-long edition of WSAV News 3 at 11. More election coverage now. How about the rematch in South Carolina between Governor Nikki Haley and her opponent, State Senator Vincent Sheehan. These two faced off back in 2010 when Haley won her first term. Well, tonight, Haley has handily beat Sheehan again. 
Uh, Haley getting 58% of the vote. That's with 89% of the uh, precincts reporting. Uh, United Citizens Party candidate Morgan Bruce Reeves and Libertarian Steve French bringing up the bottom. Meanwhile, South Carolina's Senate races were also called early tonight. Republican Lindsey Graham won his third term in the U.S. Senate, bringing in 56% of the vote. His opponents were Democrat Brad Hutto, Libertarian Victor Coker and independent Thomas Ravenel. Well, during his victory speech, Graham had lighthearted words of praise for the competition. To my opponents, uh, all 20 of them, good luck. <laughs> to Brad, I enjoyed the contest. Uh, you represent the Democratic Party well. Uh, to all of my opponents, I, I really I appreciate uh, the fact that you're willing to run, and I'm glad I won. Uh, <laughs> History also uh, tonight, uh, as appointed Republican Senator Tim Scott has been elected to fill the remaining two years of Jim DeMitt's unexpired term by beating Democrat Joyce Dickerson and American Party candidate Jill Bossie with a 63 percent of commanding lead there. Scott is now the first black U.S. Senator in the South since Reconstruction. All right, we told you a little earlier, David Perdue has beaten Michelle Nunn to capture the U.S. Senate seat from Georgia. Perdue making his victory speech right now in Atlanta, as you see there. Whether it's a stronger foreign policy, dealing with threats like ISIS and Ebola, fixing the VA, securing our border, and really doing something finally about this debt for our kids and grandkids. <laughs> And we finally want to start working on a bipartisan approach, not a partisan approach, to health care. <laughs> Georgians want term limits. I heard that over and over in this state. We believe it's time to put citizen legislators up there, people who are from us, among us, and go up there and do our bidding and try to fix the problems of the day and then come home and let somebody else go try to help. That's what we're doing. Bonnie and I never thought about doing this. You know that. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> Georgia wants somebody to fight for them, though. I heard that loud and clear in this state. And Bonnie and I are committed to go to Washington and fight for you, and not the special interests, and not the insiders in Washington, but you, the Georgians that we love. <laughs> David Perdue giving his victory speech tonight in Atlanta. He has beaten Michelle Nunn for the U.S. Senate seat uh, from Georgia, one of several Republicans who have helped wrestle the Senate away from Democrats tonight. They also, of course, control the House. I want to get back to some local elections now. The race for mayor of Hilton Head has proved to be highly contested, with five candidates running a uh, runoff election seemed almost a certainty. And tonight that proved to be a reality. Low Country reporter Brittany Shane watched the results come in with current mayor Drew Laughlin. She has more now on what the candidate had to say about those results. As you can see, it's a packed house still here at Bomboras as supporters for incumbent mayor Drew Laughlin wait for results from around the state to trickle in. As for his race, it looks like it will be going to a runoff against opponent David Bennett. Now that runoff will occur in two weeks, but that's because both men received roughly 42% of the vote, obviously not breaking that 50% mark. As for supporters, they tell me they're confident, despite that fact, that their mayor will reclaim their seat. And as for Lachlan himself, he says, despite the fact this isn't what he wanted, it's better than the alternative. And he says he's confident he can get his supporters and his voters back to the polls. Reporting from Hilton Head, Brittany Shane, News 3. And in Beaufort, the latest numbers into our newsroom show the newest city council members elected tonight are Stephen Murray and Phil Cromer. Low Country reporter Ashley Holland has been monitoring the race for Beaufort, and she is joining us now with more. And the results so far show Stephen Murray and Phil Cromer leading the race for the two Beaufort City Council seats with Murray at about 35 percent of the vote and Cromer with about 26 percent. Um, I've run on a basically a pro-growth, uh, pro-business platform and then a tax base expansion program supporting some of the things the city has been doing. Um, so I, I think it sends a very clear message that uh, the general citizens in the community are supportive of what we're doing. Now the board is still left to count the absentee ballots, but so far it's Cromer and Murray in the lead as we continue to follow the race to bring you the latest. In Beaufort, Ashley Holland, WSAV News 3.
The Beaufort Board of Elections tells News 3 not all races will have official winners tonight. That's due to the number of write-in candidates. Write-ins for county council and school board races will be tallied this week and released officially after Friday. Election officials in both the Lowcountry and Coastal Empire are reporting higher than normal voter turnout. Only a few minor glitches were reported, including a few voters not showing up to their correct polling places here in Georgia. South Carolina was the first general election under the state's new voter ID law. And WSAV is your source for all things Decision 2014. We will continue to have down to the minute election results. Hot races. Superstar surrogates, congressional power on the line. The political analysts say it is still usually not enough to draw voters to midterm polls. That's why some states put some hot button issues on the ballot. Yeah, on the ballot in Bryan County, Sunday alcohol sales. A yes vote will allow grocery and convenience stores to sell beer, wine, and liquor on Sundays between the hours of 12.30 a.m. until 11.30 p.m. And here are the numbers right now that um, is passing by a wide margin at this point. And it looks like um, yeah, that's in Pooler. That's where exactly. voters decided to clear the air. The uh, uh, on the ballot, a ban on uh, smoking in all public places. Well, that includes public buildings, bars, restaurants, even public parks. And as you can see there, 100% of the precincts now reporting, and that ban has passed overwhelmingly, 82% to 18%. Well, Thunderbolt voters will decide whether the city's low-income older homeowners will get a homestead exemption from ad valorem taxes. And in the low country, well, they'll decide whether to continue funding Beaufort County's land preservation program. The Georgia ballot also included two proposed constitutional amendments. Let's take a look now. Amendment um, A asks if the state constitution should prohibit an increase in the state income tax. A yes vote closes the door on increasing the maximum state income tax rate after the new year. At that time, the rate will be 6% and a no vote leaves the door open for an increase. Amendment B asks if reckless driving penalties should be added to the brain and spinal injury trust fund. A yes vote allows the state to increase fines for the charge of reckless driving. Any money collected would pay for care for people who have suffered head or spinal cord injuries. A no vote keeps the current fines in effect. The AP is reporting tonight the measure has been passed. Good evening again, everyone. I'm Russ Riesiger. And I'm Tina Tice Shaw. Thank you for joining us for this hour-long edition of WSAV News 3 on your side at 11. Now, after months of rival TV ads, candidate debates, and a host of campaign visits, you made your final picks at the polls today. Well, Republicans already own the House. They were hoping to wrestle the Senate away from Democrats as well. And they have done that tonight. George is one of the battlegrounds in that fight. Taking a look at uh, what we had going on here, of course, the big race, David Perdue, uh, the Republican going against Democrat Michelle Nunn and Libertarian candidate Amanda Swafford. And here are those numbers. Perdue has come out the winner. There will be no run out. He's gotten 56% of the vote right now. That's not all the votes counted, but he has been declared the winner tonight. WSAV News 3's Andrew Davis has been in Atlanta all day with the Purdue camp. He joins us now with a close look at the atmosphere there. Andrew? Well, you know, they talk about Disney World being the happiest place on earth. Right now, as I'm standing here, I believe David Purdue's headquarters may be the happiest place on earth. The chance of David coming out, the cheers every time they saw a Republican victory, but mostly the cheers when they saw that David Purdue had won the Georgia Senate seat, formerly held by Zaxby Chambliss, who was here and introduced David Purdue himself in this case. Purdue talked just a few minutes ago, talked about family, talked about friends, talked about what every supporter meant to him being out here and how much he wanted to do for Georgia. But he also said the journey was long, but it's not over. He stressed that this is just the beginning of it all. He wants to go for the fair tax, he said. He wants to follow in Zaxby Chambliss's footsteps. He wants to support the Republicans. He wants to make sure the Republicans get things done and make sure they stand together as one in this case, which is exactly what happened here. Republicans came out in force, not only regular folks, but Zaxby Chambliss himself, Johnny Isaacson, 
Jack Kingston and Sonny Perdue, his cousin, former governor, all came to say they support David Perdue. There were questions about whether Republicans would support him, but instead they said, we want to come out, we want to make sure we hold this seat, and we want to make sure that they are in office to do something to help our country and specifically help our state get more jobs. We'll see what happens in just the next few hours, few hours, few days, few weeks, whatever it may be. But right now, David Perdue is celebrating his spot because he's the new U.S. Senator. Guys, it should be interesting to hear what he says. We've got a lot more for you coming up on WSV.com, right here on WSA News, and of course, tomorrow morning on First News at 5. For now, we're going to leave you with the celebration behind me and a lot more happiness from the David Perdue camp. Back to you. All right, Andrew, thank you. Purdue's cousin, former Georgia Governor Sonny Purdue, is at that campaign headquarters tonight in Atlanta. He revealed exactly why David Purdue decided to run. He was so compelled about the direction of our country, so concerned about its debt, so, so concerned about the burden we're passing along to future generations, that he came back and said, I've got to do this. I think I can make a difference. And uh, I said, I'll do everything I can to help him. All right, we continue our team coverage now with WSAV's Joanne Merrigan. She has also been in Atlanta all day. She is joining us now with a look from inside the Michelle Nunn headquarters. Yeah, good evening, Russ and Tina. Well, a very subdued crowd here. Many people already filtering out. We even have a lot of the national media leaving. Michelle Nunn talked to supporters about 30 minutes ago. She told the, them that she had called David Perdue, congratulated him. It had been a very acrimonious campaign, especially in the last few weeks, but she said she had called Perdue, congratulated him, and wished him well. She said she also thanked the Libertarian candidate, Amanda Swafford, for her service and for her running. Uh, she thanked supporters over and over again and then thanked her family. Uh, Michelle Nunn, the daughter of former Senator Sam Nunn, said that she felt that she had done her duty. She felt that she had something that she wanted to say, that she wanted to give to people. She'd been running for Senate for about a year and a half. Uh, she said she thought that she had maybe changed Georgia politics a little bit and said hopefully she had changed it for the better, made it clear that there were two parties and that there were people that had different points of view. She said she talked about things that were important to her that she thinks are important to average people, including the minimum wage. But in the end, all of that talk, all of that campaigning, all of that hope just was dashed tonight, and she just couldn't make up the margin in the in the gap that she had between herself and Purdue. Uh, I did ask some folks as they were leaving some supporters if they would give Purdue a chance. One woman told me yes, she would give Purdue a chance. Another guy said no way. So we've got a lot of disappointment here tonight, but Michelle. Michelle Nunn, again, congratulating her opponent, wishing him well, and thanking her supporters as she admits defeat tonight in the race for the U.S. Senate. I'm Joanne Merrigan reporting live from Atlanta. Well, uh, certainly a lot of big wins for the Republican Party. Yes, by all indications, uh, it looks like the Republicans have taken control of the Senate tonight, and Republicans uh, have been fighting hard throughout the uh, political season along with Democrats as well. Uh, the Republicans knew that they needed enough seats, at least six seats to control the new Senate. It appears by all indications, as I mentioned tonight, that Republicans will control the Senate and the House as well. We want to check in now with WSAV's Dave Cartoon, and Dave has been following this election uh, from the very beginning. Uh, Dave, what can you tell us tonight? I know you have some special guests with you. A couple of chairmen, they bought their nonpartisan red and blue striped ties for us uh, tonight. Carl Smith, the former Republican chairman of Chatham County, and Will Claiborne, the current chairman of the Democratic County. Gentlemen, with one more win in North Carolina, Iowa, Alaska, there are enough states out there. With one more win, Republicans will take over control of the Senate. So my question for each of you on partisan terms, Carl, you first. If you had the ear of the new Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, and the House Speaker, John Boehner, what would you say Republicans should do with this newfound power? Govern, start leading, uh, get away from being the party of no or obstruction and actually put some bills out there that actually already have bipartisan support like corporate tax bill to get money back from overseas, two trillion to put into infrastructure, tax reform, criminal justice reform, things that both sides can work on and the president would sign. Keystone pipeline, a little bit of work there, but jobs, whether it's one job or a thousand, things that we, the parties can agree on get them both sides, pass those, and put them on the president's desk. And let's start governing and leading and doing things to help people. Will you get a sit down in the ear of the president? Is the shoe on the other foot? Is it now time to obstruct? 
No, I think that the president should try to put out an agenda where moderate Republicans, those that still exist in the Senate, would join together with the Democrats in the Senate to pass uh, those bills. I, I, I was interested to hear what, what Carl was saying there. I think the issue is going to be on the Republican side. They have that rump Ted Cruz caucus. And can they unify along bills that do have bipartisan support? I think we've seen over the last two years that they can't. If they can, uh, then I think the president should try to reach out to those moderate Republicans and, and see about getting some, some bills actually passed through Congress. Let's talk about what happened here in Georgia tonight. We did not see the margins that the polls told us we might see. These races were not as close as we thought maybe they would be. I'll start with you, Will. I, Democrats have not won statewide office in 12 years at any level, from labor all the way up to the governor's mansion. Where are we now uh, in terms of democratic politics in the state of Georgia. Was there progress tonight? Well, as I say, that, that's why they play the games. You know, you don't look at it on paper and, and see who's going to win a football game. And, and a football analogy I think is appropriate here. I, I think the Democratic Party has been trailing. There are no 21-point plays in football. you got to focus on this drive, this play, execute and move the ball forward. And I think we've seen that. I'm looking here in Chatham County specifically, uh, very narrowly in 2010, Chatham County was a red county. But by a five-point margin here tonight, Chatham County was a blue county. Uh, and, and taking things like that and just continuing forward with that momentum, I think you're looking at Georgia being a purple state, being a targeted state, and eventually turning back blue. But it's going to take several series to build that uh, uh, momentum back up. And Carl, where are we in Republican politics these days? I mean, Governor Deal has, is not out of the woods when it comes to ethics. Uh, the Ethics Commission is in shambles. He is going to go back to Atlanta and basically governed with the same General Assembly we saw. There were no competitive races here in the Coastal Empire for the legislature. What does Governor do now, a deal do now? We didn't hear much about what the next four years are supposed to look like. Well, actually, I think that's part of what the election didn't do, was bring out things that Governor did do, like criminal justice reform and reduce sentencing and spending on prison. And over the last four years, 20% less blacks have been incarcerated and been out there and have created work programs. They're going to build on the criminal justice reforms that they're doing up there and some more tax reforms, but we need to focus on jobs and the Republicans aren't sitting still. The reason there's not a runoff is because we understand demographics and where things are changing. We're doing minority outreach. You can look at some of the numbers we saw with the vote totals coming in, how well we did amongst certain minorities and even Hispanics. We know we have a long way to go as well and we're going to do our best to make sure the state stays as red as it can for as long as it can. Anything that surprised either of you? I'll let either of you jump in at this point. I mean, we didn't see libertarian turnout maybe the way we expected, although certainly within the margin of error. Any surprises tonight? I'm surprised we didn't have the runoff. I think a lot of us are surprised. But again, I think that we have spent a lot of years and actually improving and learning even from the Democrats on our ground game, our get out the vote. We have really learned and paid attention on the millennials and the younger generation communicating through Facebook and Twitter and things. So we're, we're catching up. I think it proved tonight that the margins were bigger than they were a couple of years ago when we were predicting a runoff. So we still got a long way to go, but I, I'm surprised there was no runoff. I would say that I was also surprised about that. I think the polling data uh, seemed to be, be trailing uh, what was going on uh, out there on the ground. Um, you know, I was surprised to see John Barrow lose. And I think what, what maybe you're seeing is, is a nationalization of politics to where uh, folks who would be Georgia Democrats or, or more pragmatic or more centrist. You know, Sam Nunn, I mean, his daughter, Michelle Nunn, ran her entire campaign as I'm going to be a centrist. David Perdue had Ted Cruz come down and campaign for him uh, and, and showing that he wants to be part, perhaps, of that rump caucus of the Republican Party that Ted Cruz leads. I, I think you're just seeing a lot of nationalization uh, and, and it's come here to Georgia. Yeah, John Barrow becomes the last white Democrat representing any district in the Deep South. Uh, $4 billion spent on this campaign, the most expensive midterm ever, and yet less competitive races than I think we've ever seen. So, you But know, we also had Tim Scott, right. elected senator in South Carolina, right across the state line, you know, first African-American black state, uh, United States senator elected in the Republican Party since Reconstruction. So we're moving in the right direction. But yeah, we... We need to fix the way elections are being ran and have more competition so we can discuss more issues to get more solutions out there. All right, Carl Smith, Will Claiborne, thank you for coming in. State of politics here in Georgia and across the country. Tina and Russ, back to you. 
All right, Dave, thank you. And of course, uh, much of Dave's conversation just now uh, centered around Georgia's governor. Nathan Dill is headed back to the Capitol. Here's a look at those numbers tonight. Of course, uh, he was up against Democratic candidate Jason Carter and Libertarian Andrew Hunt. And looking at those numbers, Nathan Dill uh, had a commanding lead, 56% of the vote tonight. And um, as I mentioned, uh, he will be heading back to the state Capitol to run the state for the next four years. Well, Georgia's first uh, congressional district up for grabs after a long time Representative Jack Kingston vacated the seat to run for the Senate this year. Republican State Senator Buddy Carter handedly defeating Democrat Brian Reese. News 3 Sheila Parker spoke with the newly elected congressman just a short time ago and joins us now with what she heard from him tonight. Sheila. Well, Tano, the announcement was a long time coming this evening, even though Buddy Carter never trailed as those results trickled in throughout the evening. Close to 200 people had gathered in a ballroom at the Hyatt Regency in downtown Savannah. They were there all evening awaiting the candidate's appearance as he watched results in a room upstairs. Now, it wasn't until the Associated Press officially called the race after Chatham County results came in around 930 that he came down and spoke to the crowd of supporters. Now, afterwards, he talked to me about his priorities once he heads to Washington. We have to address the fiscal irresponsibility of our government. We have to balance our budget. We have to do something about our, our national debt. When we started this campaign, our national debt was $17 trillion. Now it's $18 trillion, and we're headed in the wrong direction. We've got to turn that around. That is not the legacy we want to leave to our children and grandchildren. We've got to protect our military. We've got to, to create an environment in which jobs can be created, and we've got to do something about health care. Well, the first thing Carter did when addressing his supporters after that win was to give credit to Jack Kingston for his hard work during 22 years in office. Sheila Parker, WSAV News 3. All right, Georgia's 12th district now where John Barrow has been handily defeated in his campaign for a sixth term in Congress. The Republican Rick Allen winning that easy with 55% of the vote compared to Barrow's 45 percent of the vote for the big story uh, tonight. Republicans now control both chambers of the House. Another big race we've been watching for you is actually a rematch. Next, we're going to take a look and see if there was a difference in South Carolina's gubernatorial race this time around. You're watching WSAB News 3 on your side at 11. All right, now we want to get to that rematch in South Carolina between Governor Nikki Haley and her opponent, State Senator Vincent Shaheen. The two faced off back in 2010 when Haley won her first term. Tonight, Haley wins handily over Shaheen. Haley getting 57% uh, of the vote. It's not all counted up right now, but Haley is definitely the winner. United Citizens Party candidate Morgan Bruce and Libertarian Steve French bringing up the, uh, the bottom there of the race. Meanwhile, South Carolina's Senate races were also called early in the night. Tonight, Republican Lindsey Graham has won his third term in the U.S. Senate, bringing in quite a, a large margin when it comes to the percentage of the vote. His opponent uh, were Brad Hutto, Libertarian Victor Coker, and Independent Thomas Ravno. And there you see um, the numbers there. Uh, Lindsey Graham with 56 percent of the vote. And history made tonight as appointed Republican Senator Tim Scott has won a full six years in Washington by beating Democrat Joyce Dickerson and American Party candidate Jill Bossie. And there you see those numbers as well. Tim Scott out distancing his competitors uh, very well tonight with 63 percent of the vote. And he becomes the Okay, he becomes the uh, first uh, black U.S. senator to be elected from the South since Reconstruction. Well, the race for mayor of Hilton Head has proved to be highly contested with five candidates running a runoff election. Seemed almost certain tonight and that turned out to be the case. Low Country reporter Brittany Shane watched the results come in with current mayor Drew Laughlin. She has more now on what the candidate had to say about those results. As you can see, it's a packed house still here at Bomboras as supporters for incumbent mayor Drew Lachlan wait for results from around the state to trickle in. 
As for his race, it looks like it will be going to a runoff against opponent David Bennett. Now that runoff will occur in two weeks, but that's because both men received roughly 42% of the vote, obviously not breaking that 50% mark. As for supporters, they tell me they're confident, despite that fact, that their mayor will reclaim their seat. And as for Lachlan himself, he says, despite the fact this isn't what he wanted, it's better than the alternative. And he says he's confident he could get his supporters and his voters back to the polls. Reporting from Hilton Head, Brittany Shane, News 3. And in Beaufort, the latest numbers into our newsroom show the newest city council members elected tonight are Stephen Murray and Phil Cromer. Low Country reporter Ashley Holland has been monitoring the race for Beaufort. She is joining us now with more. And the results so far show Stephen Murray and Phil Cromer leading the race for the two Beaufort City Council seats with Murray at about 35 percent of the vote and Cromer with about 26 percent. Um, I've run on a basically a pro-growth, uh, pro-business platform and then a tax base expansion program supporting some of the things the city has been doing. Um, so I, I think it sends a very clear message that uh, the general citizens in the community are supportive of what we're doing. Now the board is still left to count the absentee ballots, but so far it's Cromer and Murray in the lead as we continue to follow the race to bring you the latest. In Beaufort, Ashley Holland, WSAV News 3. The Beaufort Board of Elections tells News 3 not all races will have official winners tonight. That's because of the number of write-in candidates. Uh, write-ins for county council and school board races will be tallied this week and released officially after Friday. Election officials in both the Lowcountry and Coastal Empire are reporting higher than normal voter turnout. Only a few minor glitches were reported, including a few voters not showing up to their correct polling places here in Georgia. In South Carolina, it was the first general election under the state's new voter ID law. We have shown you the election results for key races in our area. Up next, we're going to tell you what happened in other contests around the country. You're watching WSAV News 3 on your side at 11.